and hello YouTube, GSM I'm Smart here to do another brand new video in Adobe Illustrator. And today we're going to show you how to convert a image into a vector file. Uh, this is useful for when you want to change colors of an image, like a certain element, you want to change something in that image, whether you want to uh, adjust the outlines, maybe you have a very pixelated image or a logo that's kind of fuzzy, or someone sent you an image that is um, this generally works well with like logos or uh, typeface or um, simple character models. If they sent you something that's very low resolution and you want to have a high resolution version of that, or like I said earlier, you want to change certain colors of it, then you would need to have a vector file. A vector file allows you to scale things up and down without uh, losing any of the detail. So to do that, we have to trace the image basically. Now you can do this by hand, obviously in Illustrator, but it's also easy to do with the image trace feature and it's also much quicker. So I here have a McDonald's logo. So if we wanted to zoom in here, you can see there's um, some lack of detail here. There's a bit of fuzziness. It is a little pixelated. If we wanted to make this very sharp, no pixelation, um, you know, a vector file, that we can scale up and down, change the colors. We're gonna go up to the Windows uh, menu item, click Image Trace, and you should have a window pop-up that's called Image Tracer. You may already have it, you may not have it. If you don't see it, you have to activate it through the Windows panel up here. Now, make sure you have the image selected here, and on the left side, there's a lot of buttons, a lot of bells and whistles here that you really don't need to worry about. Generally, you wanna focus on the preset section here. Now, the preset section has several different ways that the uh, software here will trace this image. You have high fidelity, low fidelity, several colors here, line art, technical drawing, and generally, Generally, these all work in how they're described. If you have line art, you want to use line art. If you have a low fidelity, which basically means low detail, maybe it's a little more pixelated, you want to go with low fidelity. If you have something that's very detailed that needs a bit more attention, you might want to go with uh, high fidelity. But essentially, try to pick one. Then try to pick one here that fits the type of image that you have. Now, if none of these fit your image, for example, if you have um, only two colors in your image, this picture has three colors, so we're obviously going to pick three colors. But say yours has two colors, or say yours has eight colors, and it's not listed here. You can pick the closest one. So let's say our image has eight colors. We'll go with six, and then right here you can see colors. You can type in a, a, a color manually. You also have lots of other sliders here. Maybe your image has lots of corners, or maybe it has um, you know lots of paths. Where you know, here a path is basically um, from one point to another. So this M here, it has um, one point here, and the path ends over here. Then it goes there. Then it goes around. Then it stops here. Then it goes there. Then it goes around again. It stops here. So there's not a lot of paths here. But if you have a picture that has a lot of paths, maybe it has a lot of corners. Um, you'd probably need to mess with these sliders. Again though, work with the presets here. Each of these presets has a different um, value in these sliders. Some sliders are higher, some sliders are lower and such. So line art, as you can see, uh, has lots of corners, uh, more paths than just a regular one, but each of the presets comes out differently when you use them. So we obviously have three colors. We're gonna use three colors. We can see this is probably the best result. If we take a look at um, 16 colors, for example, the software is gonna to try to find 16 colors. It doesn't find it and the tracing result isn't that great. We can use low fidelity if we want. There's not a whole lot of detail to this image. So low fidelity could work, but we're gonna go and stick with the three colors. We can also have the option to ignore white. So a lot of times you may have an image that has a white background. You'd wanna use ignore white because that way the background doesn't get traced and it could provide better accuracy. There's no white here, um, and the white the white letters here, we do want part of the trace. Make sure you have the view set to tracing results. If you wanna see the outlines or check the outlines, you can do tracing result with outlines, and I'll show you how each of the layers will come out. So you'll see here that the uh, arch way is gonna be separate into three different layers, one layer here, one layer here, and then one layer here. Um, other than that, you can go click tracing result, make sure you have preview selected at the bottom left so you can see how it looks, and then we're gonna go up to object, go to image trace, hit expand. That will have each element in the image um, make up a layer. And the layers panels over here, you can click windows, layers, get the layers panel up. I know my panels are all over the place currently, um, but yours might be a bit more organized. 
And then from here on, you could be done. If you just wanted to get a higher resolution of this image, you now have that. And if you were to select everything, you can go ahead and hold down shift and you can scale this down or scale this up to as big as you want. And as you can see, the detail remains the same. If you have a regular image, a JPEG or a PNG, we all know that if you scale things down too small or scale things up too high, you start to get pixels and it starts to look bad. But with a vector file, that doesn't happen. So. Uh, if you want to go a step further here, we can also start to change some of these colors. For example, let's say we wanted to change the uh, arch arches here. Uh, we can double click on the arches and that will select that layer. If you have multiple layers, for example here, the archway here is broken up into three different layers. You have to select all three layers and not just this one. So how you can do that is you can go ahead and go to your layers panel here on the right side, press the down arrow and you'll see all the shapes here. A vector file after all is just a, a, a combination of different shapes. So we'll find our archways. Here's one part of it. On the right side, you'll see a little circle, click that. We have another one, hold down the control button. Then you'll have both selected and the third one, we'll have all three selected now. And now if you move these, you'll see that you have it selected. You can press control Z or command Z on a Mac to undo that and put it back into place. Now that we have all three shapes selected, we can go to the uh, color panel here. You can also use the appearance panel, especially if you already have some swatches, then you can use the fill and the stroke in the appearance panel. However, we're just gonna use the, we're, we're just gonna use the color panel here. They work similarly. Um, right now, as you can see, it's a yellow. We can choose a different color. We can choose the blue here, and you can also use the uh, red, blue, and green sliders here as well, or type in a hex code right here in the color panel, which you won't be able to do in the appearance panel. Appearance panel is really great if you have the swatches already. That's pretty much it. We have the color change. We can now resize it. We're gonna highlight everything again. We'll resize it down, and then we can go ahead and save this as an AI file or an EPS file. Go up to File, Save As, and you can select your format, and you will have a, a vector file of that logo. Now, I do wanna copy you, depending on how uh, how detailed your image is, how fuzzy it is, how pixelated it is, uh, the results can vary. If you have a very pixelated image, it may not work. It, the software may not be able to recognize the paths and the corners and where it should draw lines and trace it properly, but you always do have the low fidelity option available. Sometimes a low fidelity option will do a really good job at tracing some of the more pixelated um, logos or images. Sometimes they'll do a really bad job. So you, at that point, you just gotta fiddle around with the sliders a little bit. And if that doesn't work, then you'll probably have to find a higher resolution um, version of that logo. Maybe someone can send you that version of the logo, but you're pretty much out of luck at that point. You probably just have to work with that image then because um, if image trace doesn't work, then I'm not sure how else you could do it other than by tracing it by hand, obviously, which will take a bit longer. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We have plenty of other videos on Illustrator, um, InDesign, Photoshop, video editing tutorials as well, all within the Adobe suite. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Plenty of other stuff there. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. If you have tips or tricks on how to make Make this easier maybe i've missed something we're all here to learn so go ahead and leave a comment down below and make sure you check those comments down there because a lot of smart people watch these videos and they probably have some great tips for you as well i'll see you next time